Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. So we're interested in how the brain um, learns sequential structure at different temporal scales. So to look at this, we have participants play games similar to whack-a-mole. In the games, a target image will appear in one of nine locations and you have to click it. Um, and periodically, we also probe participants' uh, knowledge of the order information by having them predict where they think the image will appear next explicitly. So the games are organized according to their high level order condition and their low level order condition. So the low level order condition consists of the identity of different triplets of positions that will occur in each game. Um, and the high level order condition has to do with which positions and which triplets covering those positions occur in the first half of the game and which positions occur in the second half. Um, and so for the fairy game, for example, uh, it might go from the center to the bottom to the right, uh, and from the center to the top to the bottom left. Okay, but if you change the low level order condition to this mushroom game, now you're going to see um, that this third position has been swapped um, because it's a different low level order condition. So now it'll go from the center to the bottom, and then it'll go to the bottom left uh, if you're in the mushroom game. Um, and again, for the high level order, if you're playing the Yeti game, that differs from the fairy game. And so the Yeti game will actually have these four positions and the triplets that go along with them come first in the first half of the game. And these other four positions and the triplets covering them uh, will go in the second half. So yeah, that's the high level order condition. Um, so we have participants play each game eight times for about 35, 40 minutes of exposure. And then we um, have them do similarity judgments of the games. Um, so looking at the exposure results, over time, people's response time decreases um, and also their accuracy on our explicit prediction task goes up from the first to the second half of the game. So that's great because it shows um, gross sensitivity to the game structure. But you can also focus in on the prediction task results. And so here we're going to look at probes of the second position in each game. Um, which is the first time that the image appears off center. Um, and what we're really looking for here is were they more likely to select uh, an image position that was one of the four positions that was congruent with the high level order rule, or did they select one of the four positions that was incongruent with the high level order rule for that specific game? But of course, for a different game, it would have been congruent and acceptable. And so um, people are sensitive to that, and they're able to select one of the four correct locations uh, above chance. And that's great because it shows that they're able to use even just the background image and the target image to help them bring online which set of positions um, they should expect to um, have the target appear in first. Uh, next, we also probed the third position in each of the triplets. And that is great for getting a low level order condition um, sensitivity measure. And so here in the red bar, it's showing the proportion correct based on the correct low level order rule for that game. Uh, and this blue bar is um, a position that would be correct in like a game that was the opposite order condition, but is wrong for the current game. And so this shows sensitivity to the current game's rules. Um, granted that as they're playing the game, they're able to have um, recent reminders of what the game rules are that could be helping them. So this is sort of less of a pure measure. Next, we look at the similarity judgment results. And so for this, um, they had to choose which of the games on the bottom was more similar to the game on the top based on when and where the target image appeared. Um, and there are different trial types. So these orange trial types probe low level order knowledge. The red trial types probe high level order knowledge. Um, and if we look at those um, specific trial types and their accuracy, we'll see that people are sensitive to the high level order condition of the games, um, but they're not using the low level order information. Um, and so that could either be because they don't know it, like they haven't learned to associate the low level order condition with the games, or that they're just not using it, uh, although they do know it. And so in order to get at that, we reran the experiment, but with um, a different set of instructions that they should base the, their similarity judgments on the sequence of locations the target appeared in, which we thought would bias them to use more of this low level order information um, if it was available. Uh, and that's what we found. So um, just by changing the instructions for the similarity judgment task uh, while keeping training the same, they're now sensitive to the low level order condition of the games and their similarity judgments. 
<laughs> we're also looking at um, a follow-up study, which we use fMRI and EEG, and we would love your feedback on the design for that, so please stop by the poster. <coughs> and so in conclusion, humans show implicit sensitivity to both the low and high-level sequential structure of the games. We can capture this with our online prediction task and using post-training similarity judgments. And based on the instructions of the similarity judgment task, you can bias responding to differentially weight either the high or low level order information of the game, in the games. Thanks so much for listening.